Indigenous voice to Parliament, you've spoken about opposing this this week. We, we don't know some of the detail. We don't, some of it's been fleshed out by Labor. Why are you already opposed? I'm opposed to it on principle. I mean, we, we're, we're, not, we're one race. Um, at the end of the day, whatever, you know, I, I'm more interested in closing the gap, as I am for all Australians. Uh, I don't know why, you know, if we need to improve the way services are delivered to Outback Australia or whatever community, I do not know why you need that in the Constitution. Um, so I, I think it's just a divisive measure. I'm totally against it. And as for the detail, well, we know that they can change the detail after, you know, it comes in. I mean, you can say this will be the detail, but what's mm. to stop the detail not changing three or four years down the track? Oh, well, a couple of things, I guess. That First of all, on, on closing the gap, the people that are advocates for this say this is the best way to do this because you will get uh, a, a higher... or more people, more people listening to people who are at the front line of these problems, saying, here's, try these things, try these policies, this is how you fix it. So couldn't it actually help close the gap? Well, I, I don't see why you need to put that in the Constitution, no. And actually, if anything, I think the money that's going to be wasted on the referendum could have been spent on better um, services. But, look, you know, if you that, want to... But the, the amount spent on the referendum will be tiny compared to annual budgets on services. I mean, that's... OK, well, OK, fair argument, enough. But I, I don't see why having a preamble in the Constitution is going to make one iota of difference to delivering better services to regional communities. Well, it's not just about a preamble in the Constitution. It's about setting up this body that draws from expertise in these communities, from people who have affected, the people that live these lives, on how best to close the gap. That's yeah, the point Yeah, OK, it. but we've got lots of bodies now already. So the question is, why can't we make those bodies better rather than having another body, another layer on top of other layers? <coughs> um, and, and, you know, look, I think I'll stand to be correct on this, is there are 11 uh, people of First Nations descent or Aboriginal descent. So, yeah, there's already a voice. I mean, we're all a voice. I mean, I'd like to think I represent all Queenslanders <coughs> and Australians, regardless of their background. Um, look, I, I just... The, the issue, I guess, has been in the past as well, when you, you do have various bodies with um, recommendations that are Indigenous or First Nations members of Parliament... But this means you get clear, coherent policy developed, agreement across communities right across Australia, and it, it, it raises, I guess, the, the preeminence of that policy idea rather than it getting lost in the maelstrom of ideas because there are so many in this place. Well, well look, I, I've heard from some uh, Aboriginal communities that they're already uh, aggrieved at what's happening because they're not getting heard already. So the idea that this is going to represent all Aboriginal Not every single... I mean, there are so many that you'll never get every single one. That, that's and, that's, and that's the point. So we now run the risk of some people will be included, other people won't, won't be included anyway. Uh, I, I would rather focus on improving services and, and greater... Everything we've tried, both major parties have tried to close the gap, sort of failed. So if not, if not this for you, what? What else should we do? Well, as I said, we work on improving services uh, to, to the regions. I mean, that's something I've been that's passionate what about. That's keep talking about and more money's thrown at and it's not working. Well, well, Tom, I've said in my maiden speech is that we should get rid of eight health bureaucracies. So if you say, for example, we want to talk about budget you know, cuts and, and leading on to the budget, for example, mm. one of the things we need to have a serious conversation in this country about is the over-government and the three levels of government. So, for, and I mentioned this in my maiden speech, my hometown of Chinchilla had 3,000 people when I grew up. It had a maternity ward and four midwives. It's now got 7,000 people that's got no maternity ward or midwives, OK, because... But yet we've got eight growing health bureaucracies. OK. So why are we... You know, we've got to get better efficiency in okay. the public service. 